chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness. You guys have more than likely seen the outrage I've caused among some of the optimal guys lately, and that really boils down to the one question that I have. For all of the literature that they can cite, all of the paragraphs they can write, all of the theories that they have, that's what this stuff really comes down to is just theories. It's not something you can really tangibly prove. Do the people that preach and follow so-called optimal training, whatever that even means, do they at any level, from beginners in the gym all the way up to the IFBB pro stages, do they ever have far superior results than their peers? And at the core of a lot of the optimal philosophy is the fact that machines are better than barbells and a lot of times just free weights in general, not all of them say this, but that is a pretty recurring trend that you're going to notice in this type of content. And I originally was going to make this video simply explaining why free weights are irreplaceable, in my opinion. We're going to get to that in a moment. But instead, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of free weights and machines. Ultimately, I think both have a place in any solid routine. You have two extremes of the spectrum. One end are, as I call them, the barbell supremacists. You could call Mark Ripito the grandmaster of that movement. On the other end are the extreme optimal guys who will say that there is always a superior version of a classic exercise. The machine is always better. It's always going to hit the angle of the fibers better. It's going to be less overall fatiguing. So we have our friend here, the Venn diagram. We're going to compare and contrast both of these things. And before we get started, Christmas may have passed by the time that you see this video, which means overstock sales are going to be happening. So if you are looking to start or get the finishing touches on your home gym, if you're looking to stock up on gym bag goodies when you go to a public gym, whatever the case might be, check out amazon.com slash shop slash revival fitness. Everything from racks to bars to plates to benches, handles, attachments, I've got you covered, whether your budget is very small or very large. And whenever I say free weights here, I am generally going to be referring to barbells for the most part because dumbbells are unique in that they have more movement freedom than barbells do, and the dumbbell versions of these classic lifts are definitely useful, but in some cases, they can sort of blur the line. And when it comes to the lighter stuff, like a lateral raise, for example, comparing a dumbbell and a cable handle or a lateral raise machine, I think we're kind of splitting hairs at that point. So both of these share the fact that they complement each other well, and both of them are going to build muscle. I shouldn't have to explain this, but free weights are not magically going to lose you gains, and your estrogen is not magically going to shoot through the roof if you decide to do some machines instead of free weights. So we'll alternate back and forth here. The first point is going to be about free weights, and this is what I believe is the biggest advantage of them, regardless of anything else on this list. They're freaking hard. For the exact reason that a lot of the very optimal guys will say not to use barbells, I think that's exactly why you should use them. Oh, they're too unstable, they involve too much low back, too much of the abs, too much grip strength. Yes, those are not automatically bad things, and especially for beginners, I think you really need to do them. Being strong and proficient at heavy barbell exercises is what really separates the people who train from the people who just work out. The people who are serious lifters from the people who just exercise. I have trained hundreds of people over the past number of years, both in person and online. One of the biggest errors I see among the general public when they start lifting is the fact that they have no bodily awareness, or you could call it kinesthetic awareness to be specific, but they are completely unconscious of their foot placement, where their grip is laid out on the bar, their breathing, their core tightness, all these laundry list of variables that any proficient lifter is automatically thinking about, it becomes sort of a subconscious process. People new to the gym oftentimes, they are completely in the dark about this. And you watch them do even basic exercises on day one, and they look like a baby deer. And obviously you can get a grasp of these concepts if you're using machines, but if you ask me, there is simply no comparison. There is nothing more difficult than holding heavy weight on your back or in your hands, with no external support. They build up your work capacity. Comparing exercises that are commonly substituted for one another, the hardest set of leg press you will ever do, like leg straining, shaking, barely pushing the sled up, maybe somebody has to help you put it up at the end, that pales in comparison 
to a pretty hard set of barbell back squats. I don't think this is debatable, guys. If you want to be serious about changing your physique, going from where you are now to a way different point down the line, you really need to pay your dues. And the heavy barbell exercises are what's going to put hair on your chest, and they're really going to teach you that not only physical toughness, but the mental toughness that I think carries over into other aspects too. So if you're always shying away from barbells because, oh, they're difficult, I would assume you're more likely to not take meal prepping as seriously, not take recovery in general as seriously. It kind of carries over into other aspects too. You could even argue it carries into greater life in general. If you shy away from heavy barbell exercises, you might have that tendency all across the board. Once you can push yourself through a few hard sets of squats or deadlifts or overhead presses, a lot of other stuff in life that you thought was hard before, you realize it isn't. A lot of people seek to make their training as comfortable as possible and really take the path of least resistance to get the most amount of gains in the shortest amount of time. I don't like that idea. The greatest physiques ever were built doing primarily free weight exercises with barbells being a cornerstone. The new rise in optimal training and the reliance on machines, it's not like they have no good points, but they don't even have greater results than the people we've seen in the past or present that still favor the free weights. And that ties into perhaps the biggest pro of machines in the overall training context. They are less fatiguing, meaning they are better suited to do for more volume in a lot of cases. And I would say the more experienced and the bigger and stronger that you become over time, the more that machines are going to have value in this regard. So if you're somebody that is back squatting 185 pounds, anybody can get away with that. Now, on the flip side, if you are squatting 400 plus, 450-ish pounds, even more, for reps, that is an entirely different beast. But this is something to keep in mind, guys, because a lot of these optimal dudes you may not realize it, but they may promote mostly or exclusively machines right now. They built their base and still the majority of the muscle and strength that they have doing the basics. A lot of these guys also were athletes in their younger years, which means they did a lot of the classic stuff with their strength and conditioning program. You guys can go to any general training facility for major sports. There are far more squat racks and barbells than there are machines. So even if those guys used those movements to largely get where they are, there is simply more money now in promoting the machines instead. That's just how it goes. Now, all that said, taking some of those easily fatigued muscles out of the equation is definitely beneficial if you need it to be. So let's use the example of barbell squats versus a leg press or a hack squat. When it comes to the latter, your low back is really not involved at all because you have the support from the pad. Whereas with a free weight squat, your low back has to bear all that stress. If you're somebody who is built like me too, you have longer legs in relation to a smaller torso, you probably know how this goes. You squat low, especially the deeper down that you go. Your low back has to encounter a fair amount of stress. It can kind of throw your form off because you have to lean forward just to get down to that point. I experienced this too. If I have a heavy bar on my shoulders, at least a straight bar. It tends to irritate my delts, just getting in that position over and over. You may get some wrist or elbow pain from holding the bar. You may get some neck pain too. There's a lot of individual stuff that goes into this. But the beauty of machines is that they remove most, if not all, of these variables. And if you can keep your low back and your shoulders and all these other common problem areas fresh, you're going to most likely be able to train more consistently, reduce your risk of injury or just general fatigue, that is going to force you to maybe take some time off or deload or alter your routine more than you would like to. But this goes on to the next big pro of free weights. They are foundational movement patterns that even with machines that very closely replicate them, I don't think they can really do the job. And this is similar to the prior pro, but I think it needs expanded on because I meet so many people, you probably know them yourself, you may be one of them, who are suffering from knee pain, low back pain, shoulder pain, their posture is a disaster, right? All these common things that people deal with. I saw and heard this constantly whenever I was an in-person trainer. So many people are like, oh, well, he's new to the gym. We're going to start him out on machines so he can better learn the movements. Then we're going to move on to free weights, maybe. I think that is completely backwards. I want to start people out with their own body weight before anything else. Do some body weight lunges and squats because a lot of people can't even hit basic parallel depth with a body weight squat. 
without their knees totally caving in, heels coming up. They can barely do push-ups all the way to the ground. Plenty of guys can do the half rep push-ups, and calisthenics really are free weight movements. You need to be mastering free weights, in my estimation, before you ever really bother hopping on machines, or at least you need to be doing them both simultaneously. Focusing on machines primarily or exclusively, especially as somebody that is new to the gym, I think you're leaving a lot on the table. Now hopping back over to the machines, as many of you do in the gym, you play hopscotch on the machines. The big pro over there is the fact that they can be better for targeting, or I guess you could say biasing, specific muscles. Now something to keep in mind too, there is no way to truly isolate a muscle if you want to be technical about it. Every muscle is working in conjunction with something else, no matter what you're doing. Even something as simple as a tricep extension, a bicep curl, or a lateral raise. I've talked about before why I think the dumbbell fly is an overrated chest exercise simply because the line of the resistance and not a whole lot of tension on the pecs, at least until the very top. This is where something like a pec deck is really going to come in handy, or even a cable crossover. But let's just use the pec deck for this example, because you're going to keep that tension on your chest throughout the entire movement, given how the machine is designed. And think about something like a barbell row versus a chest supported row or a seated cable row. All of them are going to hit your back, the issue with the barbell row is that your low back may become a limiting factor or you may just not want to be working it for that specific exercise. Maybe you hit it earlier in that day or you're going to hit it later in that given training day. Like I mentioned, guys, do not fear away from training your low back. That is a huge problem I see among guys, especially beginners. Your low back is very frail because you think, oh, well, I have to avoid it. The low back is still a muscle, guys, right? You still want to train it, get it big and strong. But in terms of the overall context of your program, you do need to be tactical in how much you're going to stress it out. So while I don't think you can say that machines inherently are going to hit those muscles better than the free weight version, given the associated factors of the common problem areas, that's when machines can take the W. And the third major pro of free weights, I guess particularly barbells in this scenario, you have limitless progressive overload. Now, when it comes to dumbbells, a lot of standard gyms might run out at about 100 pounds. If you're at the point where you can lift 100 pound dumbbells for numerous exercises, it's time for you to graduate from the LA Fitness and go to a serious gym anyway. When it comes to machines, even for people that aren't particularly genetic mastodons, once you're pretty strong, you may get to the point where you max out the seated cable row, the lat pull down, anything with a stack involved. Once you're pretty darn big and strong, especially after many years in the gym, Particularly, too, if you've jumped on the juice and you're kind of just cruising, hitting PRs on everything constantly, you could very well get to the point where you have run out of space. I think they have something now called a gym pin, where it basically inserts into stacks and it acts as, like, a way to hold the plates. I've never tried that myself. I might buy one in the coming weeks to kind of test it out. But that can be annoying. Some people like to kind of put the pin through a plate, like the hole in the middle. I've done that too. With lighter weights, you're probably going to be okay, but sometimes the pin might fall out, ruins your entire set, you could damage the equipment. It gets really annoying. When it comes to progressive overload too, barbells are great because you can use micro plates. The typical gym is going to have at least two and a half pounds you can put on each side, but you can buy micro plates, once again available in my Amazon store. Some of these go down to half a pound, a quarter of a pound. Machines, from what I've seen in the vast majority of cases, if they have a stack attached to them, you're going to be able to use five pound increments. Once again, you can attach a two and a half or smaller plates to that, but that's not always a guarantee. And dumbbells are the loser here, at least if you have conventional dumbbells pre-assembled, because they only go up in five pound increments. You could try some jerry-rig stuff where you tape two and a halfs to them or smaller ones, or I see some people they hold heavy dumbbells, then put very light ones across them. They kind of make them like firewood logs stacked up. You can only add repetitions and slow the weight down for so long. Now, the next big benefit of machines is that they are far more easily adjustable. You can adjust the starting and ending point for given exercises to be different, how far you move the weight, the exact angle that you're getting it from, and you can even adjust the angle at which your back is going to rest. A good example of this phenomenon is the Smith machine. So whereas with a typical barbell squat, you can pretty much only set your feet in one spot, you have some variance, but you're likely going to fall 
or drop the weight off your back if you step too far forward. When it comes to a smith machine, you can step up relatively far, get more of like that conventional hack squat angle with it, and you're still going to be able to do the exercise because the weight is guided and attached to the hydraulics. A lot of machines too are going to have angled or different grips, so you can more easily change and adjust that if you would like to compared to a typical straight bar. Now, specialty bars do exist to account for this. You can also use dumbbells too if you want to get more free swivel. When it comes to cables, there are essentially attachments for everything you could think of at this point, and a lot of gyms now are starting to get more and more of them. And this is the last main benefit of free weights. They have more potential for variation. So we just mentioned how the machines are more easily adjustable. That said, they are still confined to one single space. Oftentimes they're bolted down and they have a path of resistance that you really can't change. Free weights are not confined to these set parameters. And they are also able to be used in conjunction with a lot of other modalities, such as boxes, blocks, bands, chains. I've seen a lot of bodybuilders use the reverse band hack squat. That seems to be the unanimous favorite for using bands when it comes to machines. I don't see a whole lot else, maybe on a leg press sometimes, or on a smith machine. So you can do things like banded squats, or bench, or deadlift. A lot of people swear that using these things, they're called accommodating resistance. They preach that this has helped them really get their strength improved in a short amount of time. And of course, we also have an array of specialty bars at this point. The safety squat bar, which is my preferred way to squat by far over the straight bar. There's the cambered bar. There are numerous types of football or Swiss bars for pressing. There's the trap bar. Commonly is going to take a little bit of stress off of the low back. There's also the high handle option with that too. So there's a lot of ways that free weights have adapted, but ultimately they still have more total variation in the grand scheme of things than machines do. And when it comes to the practicality of space and cost, especially if you're somebody that has limited room, for example, a home gym, free weights win without a question. And the final point here for the advantages of machines, you can fail them safely in the vast majority of cases without any headaches. The only exception I can really think of would be failing at the bottom of a hack squat or a leg press. Besides those two, I mean, most machines are just going to sort of hit back into themselves if you fail the weight. I'm trying to think of something here off the top of my head. Those are the only two I got. Now keep in mind something here, because a lot of people think that barbells should be avoided for this reason, because, oh, you can't fail them safely. They're dangerous, especially lifting heavy is dangerous. One rep maxing is dangerous. Guys, Please learn to use safety arms when you're lifting barbells. I can't tell you how many videos I see all the time of people that walk weight out of a squat rack. Their safety arms right there. There's so much ridiculous stuff you see, man. But there are ways to lift free weights, barbells particularly, safely, guys. This whole old idea that it's like, oh, well, don't do these because it's too dangerous. I like to train hard and I'm scared of failing. You just don't know how to lift intelligently, I hate to tell you. If you can't get a rack to bench press in, that would be the only thing here you might not have access to for safety arms because these general commercial gyms still would rather save $200 per bench than buy some safety arms or upgrade their equipment to the new benches that include some little safeties built in. But even so, you can grab a spotter if you need to. You can dump the weight off of each side. I would be sure to check your surroundings first before you do that. Or you could do the roll of shame. Don't think that you need to avoid free weights and low rep ranges or even maxing out if you want to. This can all be done safely if you know what you're doing. It's a matter of simply being smart. But this is why it is at least easier on paper, and you could say more advantageous, to lift to outright failure and do partial reps even when using machines compared to barbells specifically. And one thing I want to know too, the Smith machine, well, every Smith machine, it should have safeties. Most people never realize this and they don't notice it. The Smith machine has the thing where you can hook it on numerous rungs, and that is more of a failsafe. But sometimes if you lose your grip or something happens, maybe you slip. These little pegs, basically, if you want to call them that, the bar on the hydraulic system, once it hits those, it is not going to drop any farther. But these are so tiny that a lot of people, even experienced lifters, they simply never notice them. And that concludes our list. So I'd say it's relatively even. This is more of a pros and cons thing. Not one is automatically better than the other. But I am a bit old school. Call me Ripito Jr. I do think that free weights, namely barbells, especially the newer that you are, 
should be foundational cornerstones of your training with the machines intelligently applied. And if you are looking for routines that do just that, check out the links down below, revivalfitness.org slash programs, novice and intermediate routines available. We've got numerous days, depending on your schedule. Get big and get strong, shock your past self, with even less time in the gym for even more gains. But this has been it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to share this with a friend that needs to see it. You can get in contact with me down below for consultations, coaching, and general Patreon messaging. And be sure to use some of my links to save money on other great products and services. And I'll catch you guys next time.